Welcome back to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. On this episode, I make the traction flywheels, which are part of the centre rail traction system. If you want to know more about how the Fell traction system works, check out my video, How Does a Fell Engine Work? Work starts over at the mill, locating a piece of 10mm thick mild steel bar in the mill vise. The bar is sized to suit two flywheels, speeding up machining time. The bar is then faced using a 50mm carbide insert face mill to remove the mill scale. Once the bar is faced, it's over to the horizontal bandsaw, cutting the bar in half to suit the individual flywheels. The centre is located on each piece by scribing from corner to corner in both directions. This is then centre punched and drilled, with the centre hole sized to suit the shaft it fits on. The next task is to cut the square blank round. Prior to being able to be turned on the lathe, I recently saw this method used for cutting a circle without a rotary table and thought it'd be worth giving it a go. The way it works is you locate the part with the centre shaft and the vise, make a cut, then rotate the part and repeat it until the part is circular and in our case almost will be close enough as we're finishing it in the lathe. Well that worked remarkably well. At this point I head over to the lathe, locating the now almost round blank on a mandrel located on the ER32 collet chuck. The blank is turned round and then brought to size, before being faced. The part is then removed from the lathe and the centre removed using a sanding wheel. The part can then be located back on the mandrel the other way round, allowing the rear face to be machined. Once all the features are machined in, the final step is to chamfer the corners. Now is probably a good time to mention I'm making four flywheels for this project. The next step is to cut out the lightning holes. This will be done on the mill using the rotary table, with the first step to remove the bulk of the material with drilled holes. The part is fixed down to a mandrel in the rotary table using an additional clamp to avoid rotation. I've zeroed the digital readout on the centre of the table at this point, 
so each hole can be accurately located on the Y axis, with the X axis remaining locked. The next step is to cut the straight sides of the openings. We'll start with the rotary table set to 0 degrees and offset 6mm either side. The table is then rotated and the procedure repeated with 4mm offsets. This provides the parallel sided spokes. This is repeated at 5 different angles until all 4 openings are cut. I'm using a 4mm end mill for the cuts, so I've allowed for these in my offsets. For this operation, the x-axis is used for the offsets and the y-axis is used for making the cuts. I start with 0 degrees on the rotary table being aligned with the y-axis. Once all the straight cuts have been made, it's time to make the curved outer cuts. These are done with the x-axis zeroed and the y-axis set for the radius. The rotary table is rotated during these cuts. It is done very slowly, with the rotary table lock partly on to provide friction. I must say I lost a couple of end mills during this procedure, with the 4mm end mills not being very forgiving.
the openings now complete, it's time to remove the part from the rotary table. From here it's over to the bench to clean up the openings for the file. The openings are also deburred. And that's the flywheel's complete. I'll test fitted one, but the next step is to make some gears that fit under them, so final assembly will have to wait. In the final arrangement, these will be driven by connecting rods from the inside cylinders, which are located in the front end of the frame. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like and share this video. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Catch you next time!